Proceeding further to question number 12, it is from dimensional analysis. It says to find the distance d over which a signal can be clearly seen in foggy condition, a railway engineer uses dimensional analysis and assumes that the distance depends on density of fog, that's rho, intensity, s of light and frequency of light. The engineer finds d is proportional to s raised to the power 1 by n. We got to find the value of 1 by n and finally the value of n. So dimensionally you could see the distance d would be k. It depends on density. The intensity of light b and the frequency c where k is the dimensionless constant d is the distance d is l dimensionally rho ml minus 3 raised to the power a intensity power per unit area so that will be m t minus 3 raised to the power b and frequency t minus 1 raised to the power c so quite easy you get b as 1 by 3 and therefore the value of n has to be 3 we will proceed to question number 13 now. All right, let us see question number 13 and it is from experimental physics. During Searle's experiment to measure modulus of elasticity and this time it is for Young's modulus of elasticity, zero of vernier scale lies between this and this of main scale and the 20th division of vernier scale coincides with one of the main and it says an additional load of 2 kg keeps the zero of vernier at the same but 45th vernier scale now coincides with the main scale that means originally you could see initially the length of the wire was something 3.20 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 meter plus you could see the 20th division so 20 least count and finally I mean when additional load of 2 kg was applied you could see the zero of vernier is at the same position but this time the 45th vernier scale coincides with the mean. Length of the wire is given to be 2 meter that means the length without any load is 2 meter. Cross sectional area has also been given. Least count of vernier scale has been given. This is 10 raised to the power minus 5 meter and we got to find maximum percentage error in Young's modulus. Let us see, Young's modulus being F by A into E L where E is the elongation. You could see delta Y by Y is delta F by F plus delta L by L plus delta A by A plus delta E by E. If you see the question properly, the load is given without any error. It has been additional load 2 kg. So, delta F would be 0. The original length has been given 2 meter. So, quite obviously, that is also assumed to be error free by the question. And now, let us try to see the cross sectional area is there. The area has been given as 8 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 meter square and that is given. So therefore we assume the error in area is 0. The whole thing is there. See when you apply additional load the elongation changes. So the whole percentage change in Young's modulus would be guided by the elongation. And you could see in this given situation the elongation has been from 20 least count to 45 least count because 
this is the same thing i'm talking about the elongation when additional load 2 kg was applied and you would see 20 least count and least count is 10 raised to the power minus 5 meter and delta e the maximum percentage error is also the least count so you would get 10 raised to the power minus 5 meter the elongation was 45 minus 20 so that becomes 25 least count so this is the percentage change in young's modulus and you multiply by 100 you're going to get 4 percent so a bit tricky but everything you have to see is when additional load was applied we had to see the percentage change now we'll go to question number 14 Let's go with question number 14. It is from rotational motion. A horizontal circular platform, this is the case, of radius 0 0.5 meter and mass 0.45 kg is free to rotate about its axis. Two massless spring guns, each carrying steel ball of this much mass, are attached to platform at this many distance from the center on either sides. And this gun fires the ball in mutually perpendicular direction with the radius and in opposite direction. And by the time it comes out, it comes with a speed 9 meter per second with respect to ground to be noted. And we have to find the angular speed of the platform. It's a clear case of conservation of angular momentum where 2 m v small r, small r is the distance would be the angular momentum of these balls with respect to ground and that has to be equals to m r square by 2 into omega conserving angular momentum and from this data you will get omega as 4 radian per second now let's move to question number 15 Question number 15 is again from rotational motion. I am showing the top view of a disc of this much mass and this much radius. And three forces are acting on the disc in this way. And the question is, one second after applying the force, angular speed of the disc is. First of all, let's calculate the total torque. The total torque will be F sine 30 into R will be the torque due to one force multiplied by 3 is the net torque. Angular acceleration would be tau by I moment of inertia which is mR square by 2. R has been taken as the radius. And since alpha is constant, omega would be omega initial plus alpha T. But you know omega initial is 0. So alpha is there, t one second, you would get this answer as 2 radian per second. All right, let's see question number 16. There is an elliptical rail where the rail is kept in a vertical plane and a block of mass 1 kg is being pulled up by a force but the force is magnitude 18 Newton and is always parallel to PQ. Assuming no friction we got to calculate kinetic energy of the block at Q. It's a simple approach work done by force is change in kinetic energy plus potential energy. The work done by normal reaction is zero no friction and since the force is constant in magnitude and direction, so obviously 18 into 5 is work done by the force. Change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy has to be 40 mgh. You would see delta k is 50 and we got to bring in this format. So therefore, n would be equals to 5. Now we'll go. To question number 17. 